well now we have our basic four poses let's see what we can do to make this a little bit less floaty and a little bit less nice to uh, a little bit nicer to watch and let's maximize it and play it through and kind of like have a look at what the kind of things we can do so the overall timing is okay the motions all right um, one thing that might be kind of nicer is if the anticipation registers a little bit more so everything doesn't just have the same weight anticipation and the uh, accent the accent probably should fly by pretty fast especially considering it's so exaggerated so let's um, let's do a really simple trick we'll copy the anticipation pose shift D so we right click right underneath it in the uh, numerical area of the action editor so we select all those keys in the line make sure that all your armature layers are visible of course shift D hold down control and move everything one frame and so now that now that um, I don't know if you can see that as I play it back here but if you play it back in your blend files so you'll probably be able to see it that the anticipation just registers a little bit more because it's it's on twos basically it's got two frames instead of one and that's all I'm going to do in terms of broad full pose animation now I'm going to go down into each part of Man Candy's body and start doing more detailed breakdowns for the motion. And I'll do a few of these, and then I'll show you one example of how, how it is when it's done. And basically, there really is no limit at this point to how much you can start pushing an animation. So you can really kind of work it after that point um, quite a bit. So let's look first at our, our um, torso. I'll turn on the layer where the armature is. So let's have a look at how a torso can work. Well, the chief thing that I'd like to um, I'd like to play with here is sort of the timing of how things move and you know how things kind of break down. So we can actually do like at least a halfway breakdown between some of these poses and get them kind of nicer. So like for instance with the body kind of up like this instead of having it all come down into this pose we can have it in the middle come down but have the head kind of delayed after the rest of the body so we can see that the head kind of ended up here at the beginning of at the end of this pose and is down here at this one so it would be nice here if it was kind of like drawing an arc in the locations of all these bones between that top pose shouldn't move the cursor too much and the final pose over here so we can do that by just moving this down and I'm still moving the cursor too much but it's still about right so I can move this down rotate it a little back rotate this a little back rotate this a little back Oops. rotate the head so it's an arc with that you can even use this little bone here to pull that arc a little bit more and if I put the cursor up here so I can see it I can rotate the head so it's in line with that and I can even delay the um, the unstretching of the head so that it kind of works along that line We'll select these. Oops, that's just the camera clipping, making things look a little scary. Pull these up like that. So 
So even though I didn't, um, I didn't actually double up that pose, I did kind of make it a little bit more rubbery there. And we can do more, more little games like this. So for instance, as he pulls into this kind of hold pose, I can pull his torso down a bit earlier and have it pull his head into that pose a little bit. And I'll delay his neck and I'll delay his head by rotating it back and then it's just a little bit more pleasant emotion and I can even have this guy go a little bit further down here in this frame and then pop up and let's introduce some liveliness into here by scrunching this up a little bit further so the delayed head maybe continues to move just a bit and really tiny motions here because we're only talking a frame difference here so and I think I did too much so I'll just move this I think this guy is moving a bit too much here see that so I can just fix that can actually oppose the head motion a little bit here. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of life in the hold, but you don't want to do too much, obviously. First of all, because it's really fast, it's only one frame. And second, because a hold should still be a hold. You shouldn't change it into something else while you're working, make it into an animation of some sort. We can also have fun with the facial bones. We kind of did a little bit of that. Um, earlier but we can have we can have things happen in different orders so for instance we can have the eyes compress before the mouth does for instance so we lift this get these two in and we can lift this up a little bit we can scale the eyes in so we can get the sort of mouth compression happening a little bit early while And then, as he's coming up, we can have his body sort of pushing his head, skull kind of up into that pose. So kind of get more, maybe delay this frame. It's kind of hard here because we have asymmetry in our in our uh, framing but we can also use the uh, head to help that too and then just kind of let's delay the jaw or rather
well it depends on your perspective if we're delaying it or advancing it so and I've been accused of making things a little bit too too niche as I work but Tunish is always fun and kind of this rubbery bouncy thing really appeals to me for some reason. You can always tone it down. Like we'll do a little toning down here I think. Or not, I don't know. For instance we can get the mouth more normal here. the jaw close the jaw early Have a look at that so basically the idea is not everything happens at the same time you just have to decide what leads and what follows I think this is following a little bit too much So we can just de-exaggerate that a little bit and maybe I'll push it back like that. Ah, let's go back to the beginning. So it's a slightly less crazy thing that we're doing here. And another thing that you might want to tweak a little bit, of course, is the hands and the fingers. They're very prone to that kind of overlapping action. They should never move as one bulk either. So once you're satisfied with the body, you might want to turn on your arm controllers. You can home key to see their keys. So. Here's a very regular, so we're going from this pose to this pose. And you can see that the hands are down here, roughly here. And here they're up here. So in the middle, you might want to trail, it's all rotational keys, you might want to trail the hands so the upper arms are kind of going earlier than the hands. Always. And then here, you might still want to have the hands trailing a bit. Since this one went out, you could even swing the hand like that. And then you might not want to have the hands hit that top so quickly here. You might want to keep them down. And you might want to delay them reaching the top by a couple of frames. And you might want to do something similar to the forearms here. Just delay this by a frame and make it a little bit, just a tiny bit lower here because they don't flop as much. And this isn't such a broad motion, but I'll I'll delay the hands just a little bit here. pull the shoulder downs a little bit earlier as well. How the shoulders even appear to well not quite bounce back but just to give us a little 
and also the shoulders maybe have them go up a little bit a pinch earlier as we're going down I'm not going to worry about that hand animation too much here because it goes out of frame but I'll just delay once again a little bit on the hands and arms just like that just to get that air feeling and of course you can inject more life into it by playing with the fingers as well as the arms because the fingers you can you can treat them either as sort of like you know thinking parts when the hands making poses like fists are pointing or so and so forth like that they lead motion uh, or you can treat them almost like you know pieces of um, fleshy tendrils that kind of trail behind the motion of the hand and uh, when you use them like that you can smooth the arcs of the motion a little bit so here you can have them sort of going in the arc like so and then you can delay them reaching that top like so just grab these move them a frame or even two see how that looks and then here you can have them trail like that instead of being the way they are and then as they come to the bottom it might be fun to have them sort of closing together like that and I think they're not trailing quite enough here so I'll scale them out and there we go. And that looks a little bit more fun. And we can do similar things to the fingers on the other hand if we want to. And let's see. Hide this layer just so it doesn't get in our way. So as it's going here, it, they might be trailing backwards just sort of pointing at where they've been likewise the hand might do a little bit of that like so and then we might delay them flourishing and then here they should be trailing the motion rather than leading it and let's make sure they yeah and then maybe have them scoot and you know so stuff like that gives a little more alive feeling to our entire animation. So we can tweak it. 
and continue working on it until we feel that it's uh, ready or done. Also another thing that's kind of nice is if you, um, well here, here's the camera, um, if you turn the pass bar 2 up just so you don't see things that are outside of the camera view that might distract you and you can turn off the layer that has the armature on it just to get a feel for how it looks and so basically the the rest of the process of this is tweaking where you just look at the arcs of the bones you look for anything ugly anything that you can improve and you push it further and further and I'm not going to do too much of that here because it'll just take a long time um, you really can spend a long time on a simple animation but I'll just show you some tricks you can do in Blender you can uh, click on the armature visualization do calculate paths and you can see the path that the bone takes um, right here and you can kind of see any ugliness or jerks in that path and try to get the arc as nice as you would like it if you want and so and so forth just to just to kind of that as a, a tool that assists you there and you can also turn on ghosting so you can see where it's been and where it's going to at every frame instead of just having to look at it once per frame so and that generally those are generally tools that really assist you in tweaking this animation and what you're looking for is that things are moving along ni nice arcs uh, you might want to really look at the arcs that the eyes are taking for instance and make sure that they're not uh, jiggling around too much in view because the eyes of the character are probably going to draw the eyes of the audience and um, especially in not so exaggerated motions like if the cat is walking or talking or something like that you don't want them to be uncomfortably moving around in really erratic kind of paths so turning on the paths and seeing what they look like is really helpful for those cases and uh, that concludes a basic tutorial of how you animate a take with man candy and there are lots of kinds of takes with lots of different timings and even if you try to do a take twice uh, it might not come out quite the same way so this is um, this version that we did and I think I did another one earlier with a slightly different um, different posing but the same idea as I was kind of practicing to see what uh, what I do for the tutorial and so that concludes this